So what is a promise anyways? As a dad of four children under the age of 10, I'm asked all types of questions every day. Sometimes I'm able to respond immediately, and other times it takes me a bit to think about before I answer. A promise works much the same way. Promises have a declarative syntax for handling asynchronous requests. A promise is comprised of three states, pending, resolved, and rejected. Let's have a look at each of these states starting with pending. First, we'll declare a promise. We do this by instantiating the promise and assigning it to a variable. We'll pass an anonymous function to the promise, which takes two arguments, resolve and reject. For this example, we'll add a set timeout to the body of our function that will resolve after three seconds. As I mentioned in part two, set timeout is an easy way to mock asynchronous flow, but could also be an AJAX request to a server. Let's console log our promise directly after we declared it to see the state of it. Our promise is pending because it hasn't been resolved yet. Remember, JavaScript is synchronous most of the time, so when we declare our console log after the promise, it's run before the promise has time to resolve. Let's look at one way we can check to see the state of our promise after it's been resolved. This isn't the proper way to do it, but it's for demonstration purposes, so we'll go ahead and try it. The promise is resolved after three seconds, and we're checking the state of the promise after four seconds. This gives the promise time to resolve before we console log its state. Let's go ahead and do this the proper way using the then method. The then method is essentially the meat and potatoes of the promises paradigm. It gives us control of our application's flow by taking an asynchronous request and making it somewhat asynchronous again. The resolve param returns the value of our resolve promise so we can retrieve it in our then method. Let's look at our promise's second parameter, the reject method. This method is used to handle things that you deem a failure. For instance, if you are making an AJAX request, it could be the server returning a 404, so you can handle what that looks like on the front end of your application. We can then catch the failing promise, or the rejection, by using the catch method and passing it a value. And that's it. Again, a promise has three states. Pending, meaning the promise hasn't been fulfilled or resolved or rejected yet. Resolved, meaning the promise has been resolved and the value is available in the then method. And last but not least is rejected, meaning the promise has been fulfilled, but an error happened along the way somewhere, which can also be passed to the catch method. So it's available as a value there.